Section 1.1, variables and constants. A variable is a symbol used to represent an unknown quantity. Examples of variables include letters such as A, B, C, or X, Y, Z. The most common variable we see in most equations is the letter X. All other letters can be equally used. Sometimes we'll also see some of the Greek alphabet appearing as variables, such as the letter theta, the letter tau, or the letter phi. But a variable really can be any symbol, so something such as triangle or tree could be a variable. In example one, we're going to let P be the price in dollars to see a Lady Gaga concert. What is the meaning of P equals 75? So if P is the price in dollars, then P equals 75 means that it costs $75 uh, to see the concert. Part B, let T be the number of years since 2000. What is the meaning of T equals 10? What is the meaning of T equals negative 5? So if T is equal to 10, the number of years since 2000, that's going to mean that we're looking at 10 years since 2000 to so the year 2010. If t is equal to negative 5, looking at negative 5 years since 2000 or 5 years before 2000, so that would be the year 1995. Part C. Let t be the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. What values of t represent the temperature 20 degrees Fahrenheit below zero? 20 degrees below zero would be the temperature t equals negative 20. Definition. A constant is a known quantity represented by a number or a symbol. Occasionally we will know the value of a constant such as 2 or 3. Sometimes we will not um, be given the explicit numeric value of the constant, but we will be told that a is a constant such as a equals 6 or pi is a constant where we know that pi is equal to 3.14, etc. Example 2. A rectangle has an area of 8 square feet. Let W be the width, let L be the length, and let A be the area. Sketch three possible rectangles of an area of 8 square feet. Okay, if it's going to have an area of 8 square feet, if I make a little block that has an area of 1 square feet, I'm going to need 8 of those. So I could make something that was eight blocks long. This is an eight by one, or an area rectangle of area eight. Area is computed by length times width. So one times eight is eight. Or I could have an area, again, it's gonna have to have eight blocks, but I could have a rectangle that had four blocks by two blocks. This would be a 2 by 4 rectangle whose area is 8. The other way would be to have a rectangle that was 2 blocks by 4 blocks. This would be a 4 by 2. The area is also 8. Which of the symbols L, W, and A are variables? The area is fixed at 8. The area must be 8, so the area is not a variable but the width and the length were not given to us. We were able to draw different widths and different lengths to make a rectangle, so those are variables. The symbol A is a constant, because I know that in this example, A must always be eight. Example three, consider the following numbers. Which of these numbers are each type listed below? Counting numbers. Counting numbers are the numbers one, two, three, and so on. They must be positive and they must be whole numbers. So negative three can't be a counting number, nor can the square root of two, you don't, can't take the square root of two. Fractions are not counting numbers. The square root of 16. This one is a counting number, only because you know that the square root of 16 comes out to be the perfect number four, and four is an integer. Four is a whole number, it is a positive whole number, so it comes out to be a counting number. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the square root of 16. Rational numbers. 
Rational numbers include those numbers that are counting numbers, those numbers that are whole numbers, and those numbers that are fractions. Uh, negative integers are also counted as rationals. And numbers that can be written as fractions but are currently written as decimals, such as this one would be 254 hundredths, all count as rationals. So these, six, these five numbers right here are rational. Real numbers. Any number that you can list is a real number. So all of these numbers are going to be real numbers. Okay. Integers. The integers are whole numbers, but they're whole numbers, unlike counting numbers, they're whole numbers that can be either positive or negative. Zero is also included in the integers. It's not included in the counting numbers. Counting numbers are whole numbers that start at one. And last, irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are going to be those numbers that can only be represented by a non-repeating decimal. So it's going to throw out any of these rational numbers. If, it's a, if it is irrational, it cannot also be rational. That leaves us just, just the square root of 2 as the only irrational number. Example 4. The number of homes sold by a real estate agent for seven months listed in chronological order are 0, 3, 5, and 6. Graph those values, the agent sales, on the number line. So we want to graph 0, um, 1, 2, 3. We're just going to use a dot to graph a number, 5 and 6. All right. Did the agent sales increase, decrease, stay approximately the same, or none of these? They increased. The increase, as you can see uh, here, they went up each time. Did the increases in the agent sales increase, decrease, stay approximately the same, or none of these? The increases, you can see how large each of these increases is by the space between the numbers. The increases actually decreased. The size of each increase decreased. All right, the next topic, defined the average or mean of a set of numbers. Those two words mean the same thing. We want to add all the numbers up and divide by the number of numbers. Example 5. The number of indoor water parks and hotels in the United States between 2000 and 2005 are 5, 11, 20, 21, 25. I'm going to graph each of these in the number line. Now this number line has not been uh, labeled, so we're going to start it off at somewhere that we're going to have a frame of reference for each of these numbers. So I'm going to start it off at 0 way over here so that I can evenly count. Let's make each of these tick marks worth 5. 5, 10, 15. I'm trying to make these as evenly spaced as possible here. Uh, to be a true number line, we need to have evenly spaced intervals. So 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. So that's how my number line looks. We can graph 5 right on the 5 line. 11 be one increment past the 10 line, 20, 21, and 25. Okay, so each of these is marked. Uh, it might also be helpful if we labeled each of these five increments, since there's nothing, if I don't label these, to tell me that these increase by five. Now part B, find the average of the data values and graph it on the number line. Okay, so let's find the average. To find the average, you want to add all the numbers up. 5 plus 11 plus 20 plus 21 plus 25. So if you add all those numbers up, you get 82. Now we also need to divide this by the number of numbers that there were. So originally there were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers. So we need to divide this by 5 to get the average. So 82 divided by 5 is 16.4. So the average value is 16.4.
So to graph this in the number line, we know where 15 is, 16 would be right next to it. 16.4 is halfway between 16 and 17, so this is where our average is going to be.